Hello everyone. Welcome to the Blockchain News Club. Let's take a brief intro into today's crypto updates before going into the details. Russian banks may be the main losers from the introduction of a digital ruble while retailers will save on acquiring fees, analysts have predicted. Commercial banks may lose up to 50 billion rubles annually. Attorney John Deaton highlighted that US SEC lawyers and staff have been talking about the tokens themselves as being securities. Bill Morgan, a crypto lawyer and digital asset enthusiast, shares that his ongoing review of the Daubert Challenge documents reveals a significant weakness in the SEC arguments against Ripple. U.S. Securities Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler has been criticized by Minnesota Senator Tom Emmer for his flawed crypto information gathering efforts. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that the payments firm was expecting a ruling in the coming single-digit number of months. Before we dive deep into today's updates, please subscribe to our Blockchain News Club channel. It will help us immensely. Banks in Russia to lose $700 million a year due to digital ruble. Analysts believe that while shops will save on obtaining costs as a result of the launch of a digital currency, Russian banks may be the primary losers. Due to the possibility of receiving no interest or payback, the advantages for customers adopting the new digital money are not immediately apparent. Russia's introduction of the digital ruble is rumored to cause losses for financial institutions. According to a prediction made by financial specialists at Yakov & Partners, the former Russian division of management consulting firm McKinsey, commercial banks could lose as much as $715 million yearly when a digital version of the ruble is adopted. Meanwhile, according to the authors of the study, who were published by the Russian edition of Forbes, retail chains may potentially enhance their revenue by up to 80 billion rubles annually. Additionally, customers cannot get rewards for their purchases or interest on their balances. The digital ruble is predicted by experts to occupy a specific space in the domestic retail payment sector and replace a portion of card payments. Losses for banks will mostly be caused by a decline in commission income from processing such payments. Retailers will benefit from lower acquiring costs and rapid payments that clear more quickly than card transfers. The advantages for customers are not assured because, unlike bank deposits, the concept of the Russian central bank's digital currency, an electronic form of money, does not anticipate the accrual of interest on the holdings. They will probably also stop receiving the kickback that banks currently receive from card transactions. The report notes and elaborates. The digital ruble has no obvious advantages in terms of convenience in everyday use, and international experience shows that the reduction in the cost of acquiring does not lead to price reductions or slowdown in price growth, only to an increase in retailers' profits. After cash and electronic money, the Bank of Russia will issue the digital ruble, which is intended to be the third form of the Russian national currency. It is not intended to replace deposits or bank payments, rather, it should be used as a store of value and a method of payment. A prototype for the project was finally finished in December of the following year after it was first reported in October of 2020. The pilot phase began in January 2022, and the Monetary Authority intends to conduct real-world user and transaction testing in April 2023 before launching fully in 2024. The Russian parliament received a bill on the digital ruble in January. SEC to lose XRP lawsuit over this argument. The door has been opened for Ripple and the defendants engaged in the XRP litigation during one of the final sessions in the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission versus LBRY lawsuit. The attorney for XRP holders now feels more confident that the judge will reject the SEC's move for summary judgment. Ripple has upper hand in XRP lawsuit? Lawyer John Deaton emphasized that U.S. SEC personnel and lawyers have been referring to the tokens themselves as securities. While being a digital asset, Bitcoin was formally promoted, offered, and sold as an investment contract. But this is referred to as a security. It is crucial to remember that even if BTC was used as a security by someone, Bitcoin remained a cryptocurrency. The lawyer claimed that the reasoning is still valid in the XRP lawsuit. At some point down the road, he purchased Ripple's case for issuing or selling XRP as an investment contract. But even if Ripple follows the same procedure today, XRP will still stay a digital currency and not become a security. According to specifics, the judge in the LBRY lawsuit determined that when it made direct sales, the LBRY token was sold as an investment contract. Will judge decide in Ripple's favor? The lawyer said that the declaration would include further sales of the token if the judge thought that the token itself constituted a security. The judge did clarify that his decision does not apply to a later sale of LBC tokens. The court's clarification was crucial for the holders of cryptocurrencies for what turns out to be the most important reason. The commission may still pursue promoters who sell a token directly. In an investment contract case, the security is never the underlying asset. 
According to the XRP lawsuit's Amicus Curie, the most recent development gives him hope that the judge would reject the SEC's petition for summary judgment. Pro Ripple lawyer highlights striking evidence in favor of XRP and SEC lawsuit. Crypto lawyer and enthusiast Bill Morgan claims that the SEC's case against Ripple has a serious flaw that has to be addressed in the Daubert Challenge docs. In a series of tweets, Morgan noted one intriguing finding from his assessment of Ripple's response to the SEC's Daubert Challenge, the organization's inconsistencies, or typical change of position. He provides examples. The first expert opinion on the viability of Ripple's cross-border remittance product alleged that ODL was not a legitimate use case for XRP and questioned the company's usage of the technology. After Ripple's expert challenged the SEC's claims and showed that cross-border remittance use was possible, the SEC changed its position and declared the subject was unimportant. The SEC is adopting its litigation stances, according to Ripple, to further its intended goal and not out of a faithful allegiance to the law, the company claimed. Striking evidence, XRP is not security, under GAAP. According to Morgan, the SEC said that the information presented by a Ripple specialist detailing how XRP was handled by other governmental or commercial frameworks was unrelated. The proof was that XRP is not a security based on its economic characteristics. Ripple's response to the SEC goes thus. Even if security can mean one thing under federal securities law and another under Treasury regulations, CFTC regulations, federal tax laws, and GAAP, the practical treatment of XRP under these other laws and regulations, and the SEC's long silence about it, is highly relevant to whether an objective person had fair notice that the SEC would suddenly, many years later, claim that XRP is a security. SEC under scrutiny, Congress to review regulatory overreach. The SEC has been under scrutiny for its conduct for a number of months. It was unable to save the investors millions of dollars and stop the FTX from collapsing. In addition to a recently resolved litigation against LBRY, it has an ongoing lawsuit against Ripple. Senator Tom Emmer of Minnesota has blasted U.S. Securities Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler for his failed crypto information gathering operations, and he has been asked to testify before Congress to explain the consequences of his regulatory failings. Emmer cited the failure of the Terra ecosystem as well as the crypto platform Celsius, Voyager, and FTX in saying that we now know Gensler's crypto information gathering efforts were ineffective. Is the SEC operating without congressional approval? Eleanor Tourette, a Fox business journalist, claims that Congress would be closely monitoring the U.S. SEC in the upcoming months. The U.S. Financial Services Committee claims that the Commission has not received a renewal since 2015. Congress is required to assess and alter a federal agency in accordance with directives throughout the reauthorization process. This is done to make sure the agency is organized so it may function effectively while still achieving its declared objective. Congress makes sure that the organization gets enough financing from the federal government to operate. On the other hand, the U.S. SEC is rumored to have gotten more than $2 billion in financing for the 2023 fiscal year. The Commission's jurisdiction also ran out in 2015. Gensler to give evidence. Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, will therefore have to oppose the Financial Services Committee's investigation. The Commission's proper operation and the justification for government funding must be proven by Gensler. The Financial Services Committee's most recent move to reauthorize the Commission is a foreshadowing of the GOP's intention to drastically curtail the agency. The Committee will monitor all actions, operations, and other projects carried out by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. To make sure the agency is fulfilling its goal of safeguarding investors, this will be done. To sum up, the fact that the SEC acted in such a manner without being reauthorized has startled the public. Some people think the SEC's punishment was well warranted. The SEC has to reevaluate its regulatory strategy. Ripple says it's more confident than ever ahead of highly anticipated SEC XRP ruling. In response to the SEC's case, which claims that Ripple offered XRP as an unregistered security, the payments business is providing an update. In its fourth quarter report for 2022, Ripple states that it anticipates a decision this year and is more confident than ever about the outcome. On December 2, Ripple's reply brief in support of its move for summary judgment, in which the business requested that the court rule in its favor, was made available to the public. After two years of battling this lawsuit on behalf of the entire crypto sector and American innovation, Ripple is pleased with its defense and more assured than ever as it awaits the judge's ruling. The case has now been completely briefed. The timing of the decision is up to the judge, although the business hopes to see a decision in 2023. The courts have not stated when a decision is anticipated to be made, 
but Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse stated last month that the payments company was anticipating a decision in the coming single-digit number of months. Regarding the potential for a settlement between Ripple and the SEC, Garlinghouse stated, XRP is not a security on a going-forward basis, and that is the only way that Ripple would settle, as I've maintained from the very beginning. David Schwartz, the chief technology officer of Ripple, recently stated that XRP meets the criteria for being a commodity. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for regular updates in the blockchain community.